app it's set up using Azure AKS and pipelines. Uh, my name is Mike Redman, and I work with Mobomo. Uh, starting off, I'd like to thank all the sponsors here for Drupal GovCon, making Drupal GovCon possible. Um, there are a lot of people that put a lot of work to make events like this happen for us all to come together, be able to talk and uh, learn new things and uh, collaborate. So that's a great thing. A um, little bit about me. Um, I'm a technical lead uh, DevOps engineer for Mobomo. I've been doing DevOps for a little bit over five years now. Um, that's probably been my primary role within the organization. I've done a little bit of project management and some backend and front end dev as well. Um, I have both on-premise and cloud experience using AWS and Azure primarily. And since I've worked at Mobomo, most of my projects have utilized Kubernetes um, and I've used most of the different pipeline products that exist out there uh, including Jenkins, Azure Pipelines, and Circle CI. Um, I've deployed and supported everything from Drupal 7 to 10 on a few different projects, and I've worked with a lot of different types of clients, uh, both federal and commercial. Uh, if you don't know, Mobomo uh, is kind of a full-service digital transformation company. Uh, we do everything from hosting to digital transformation migration work, uh, user design, uh, user experience, all those kinds of things. Um, some of our, uh, this next slide will go over some of our customers, um, some of our bigger projects that we've done, uh, things like NASA.gov, uh, USGS, NOAA Fisheries, um, a couple other slightly smaller ones, FERC, Pandemic Oversight, ONR, and uh, the USAID. Um, Fun thing about FERC and Pandemic Oversight, those were both utilizing Azure, so uh, obviously that's relevant to what we're speaking about today. Um, so why are we here? So I wanted to give this presentation to kind of give a demo and a introduction for people who maybe haven't used Azure, maybe haven't used uh, Kubernetes, or uh, especially another product is the Azure Pipelines product for uh, pipelines and kind of CI CD. Um, I feel like those are probably some of the lesser used tools, but some places still want to use them and like to use them. Um, and they can work really well if, uh, if you know enough about them or go into them. Uh, so what am I discussing? So um, kind of containerization of Drupal, creating Docker containers uh, that support Drupal, um, Kubernetes, Azure, CI CD solutions and kind of infrastructure as code as a whole. Uh, who here has experience using Docker and containers with Drupal? How many of you have experience using Kubernetes? How many in Azure? Perfect. Um, so, yeah. So, the problem um, we want a Drupal environment, we want to utilize Azure, whether it's the client wants to utilize it, we want to utilize it, we want to learn something new, anything like that. Uh, are you newer to DevOps? Are you newer to Azure? Do you just want to learn more about containerization and the benefits of it? Um, so the next couple are like, you know, common Google questions that are easy to look up and get different answers. Uh, but why containerize? Why use Kubernetes? Why use these things? Um, you know, there's simple answers like portability, flexibility, things like that. Um, the biggest thing for me for like containerization and also infrastructure as a code as a whole uh, that I appreciate is what I call a reduction of drift. So um, if you, you know, deploy an EC2 instance out there and someone goes in manually, SSHs into it and makes a configuration change, where is that captured? Do you capture that in code somewhere? Um, infrastructure as code, containers are great for managing that and making sure that that uh, commit and that change, you actually have a record of it, you know why it was made and or uh, you know what they were doing, right? Um, Kubernetes is nice. Uh, it's reliable. It has a lot of automation available to it. Um, and it has an open source community and a lot of people around helping, you know, try to figure out things and help people get environments up and things along those lines. All right, so our solution, uh, this one was kind of a highlight of one of the biggest projects we did. Uh, so this was FERC. Uh, they were on an old uh, Adobe Dreamweaver site uh, that was very, very terrible um, for them. It was painful for them. They could not manage content like they wanted to. Um, they could not uh, make changes. They always had to involve devs for simple content changes. 
Um, so we did a full site overhaul. We did a site migration to Drupal 8, and since then we've upgraded it to Drupal 10. Uh, we fully changed over the theme. Um, they have this very fancy, weird uh, side nav menu that uh, expands out that you should go to FERC.gov, check it out. It was a very interesting one to uh, kind of learn and deal with. Um, before us, their website had basically zero CICD, and z they had no source code to help us with. Uh, they just had their website, so we had to go in and help uh, basically scrape their site to help migrate it over to Drupal and convert everything over. In the process of that project, we also added you know, functional tests for different pieces um, and also gave them the ability to actually have content managers that can go on their website, post articles, and do things that they want to do. All right, so here I have a QR code uh, with a link to a GitHub repository that we're going to be reviewing today as part of my demo. Um, it is my repository and uh, has a number of changes. I've gone through a few different things on it. Um, it's all pretty basic, but it's meant to serve as kind of a jumping point for, hey, here's a very basic Docker configuration to build up a Drupal site and uh, also be able to um, deploy that into Azure and use an Azure pipeline and things like that. All right, so next we're gonna kind of jump into the demo and jump in. All right, so I have made everything very large. Let me know how that looks. Does that look okay? Can you read that? Yeah. All right, so, uh, the repository looks uh, something similar to what you see on the left. We have a few folders here that I'll explain. Um, Drupal demo is a Helm chart that is utilized with Kubernetes. If you don't know what Helm is, Helm is a package management software that is open source and used for Kubernetes. Um, a lot of people like it, some people don't. You don't have to use it, it's totally optional. Um, it is something that I have used and does make things a little bit easier in my opinion. Uh, inside Nginx config is, as you can guess, an Nginx config. Inside pipelines is a pipeline YAML file. And webroot is just a basic uh, Drupal install webroot. I'm not uh, going to be actually interacting or doing too much within Drupal. Uh, I imagine most of us have some experience doing that. So this is really just a demo to the Azure side and getting things in there. Uh, so the big things you'll notice inside the root of the repo is a docker compose file and a docker file so we'll go ahead and start with docker compose uh, docker compose is a very handy uh, service that allows you to define uh, different services and different containers that you want to build out and bring them up and take them down um, things along those lines i am using very basic containers here where i am basically just uh, using like a canned mysql image for local uh, so we'll actually bring up a MySQL container for your database. Uh, and then I'm using uh, the Docker file, which we'll review in a second, for Drupal PHP. And then a uh, web server for Nginx to do uh, front-end web proxy, right? Uh, I do have some extra stuff in here for CertBot in case you wanted to take this to the next level and do SSL and everything like that. I'm not doing any of that in this demo today. Um, so. In reviewing this, this is pretty simple. We're gonna have four different containers uh, for our four different services. We're gonna have a MySQL container, a Drupal PHP container, a web server container, and a Serpot container. Um, and to go over the Drupal PHP and the web server containers, I have a Docker file that uh, is where those are built from. So I did include here, um, we'll go over the readme in a second, but one of like the next steps, if you were to actually wanna use this project and kind of jumpstart a new project would be integrating some of the common Drupal things that we do like using Composer. Uh, so this is an example of how you could use Composer, build the Composer stuff, and then you would copy it back out into your PHP container so that you don't have to keep Composer on your prod machine. Um, here is where we have the uh, stage of the Docker file for the PHP prod container. I'm just pulling a base Drupal uh, container using FBM Alpine. And I just showed a couple sample commands from Docker uh, to set the time zone and set the work directory. And for Nginx, you can see uh, I'm just using a basic Nginx uh, container from their repository, setting the version and copying over that Nginx config that I have in the repo. 
And so to demo uh, kind of what these two files do and how they're able, we're going to hop into our uh, terminal. And I am, which actually, sorry, I should go over in the readme at the very beginning is we have the items required to do most of the tasks in this repository. So there are a few um, prerequisites, primarily Docker. You will need Docker to do Docker or Docker Compose commands. Um, and then for all the Azure related stuff, you will need Azure CLI and Azure subscription and uh, Azure DevOps organization. So you can create one of those. They do have free tiers for uh, the DevOps organization. As far as deploying resources into Azure, they do have free tiers for that stuff. I don't think Kubernetes comes very free though. All right, so if we come in here and clone that repo and go into the repo root, you can do docker compose up and we'll just run it in the background. It should go through and create all of our containers and create all of that. We can now do a docker compose ps and it should show us all of our running containers. Uh, so we can see the state of all three of the main containers are up and then the surfbot one exited because I don't actually have that doing anything yet. Um, and if we come here to our browser, we should be able to see, hey, we have a basic Drupal site, nothing really done to it. Um, and so that's kind of the beginning of, hey, here's a local environment, here's something you could at least get started with. The next question is, okay, well, let's say we want to push that into Azure, what do we need to do? And so that's where um, next into the re uh, resource development, I talk about different ways of managing infrastructure as code. Um, there are lots of different solutions out there to it. Uh, I kind of go through a description here. I think Terraform's probably my preferred or the one that I've used that I enjoyed the most. Uh, but Azure does have an out of the box, uh, what they call ARM templates, Azure Resource Manager templates that you can go in. And here's a link to a guide. Um, I can click that link or grab it really quick that will actually walk you through how to deploy a Kubernetes cluster using an Azure Resource Manager template. And uh, it works as well. Um, the Resource Manager templates don't do as well of a job of managing state as what Terraform does. Um, in my opinion, I think that's the biggest difference. Um, but if you build this into your CI pipeline, you definitely could do the same thing. It would just take a little bit more effort. Uh, as a part of that, I also linked the same guide using Terraform. So you can come here and there's a few different uh, guides for how you can set up uh, a few different Terraform files and deploy an AKS cluster using Terraform as well. Um, so then uh, kind of went over local development, how to bring up the containers, how to bring them back down. So the next step is, okay, we have our local development, we have an AKS cluster out there. How do we actually connect these? How do I deploy these containers to my cluster and make that work? And so that's where uh, you will need to go to Azure DevOps. Um, and create an organization first. So our organization is Mobomo, and then we have a project uh, called Drupal Demo, and that's where uh, I created this project. And so inside here, Azure DevOps as a whole, as a solution, offers uh, very similar things to what GitHub does. You can actually house your repos here and everything like that. It also has its own ticketing system and boards. Um, I've used both of those. They're both fine. Nothing kind of great to write home about, nothing terrible. Uh, but the pipelines and the test plans artifacts that they offer, I think, are very great solutions. Um, I think they're uh, very competitive to what the other things are out there. Um, so like pipelines, I think a lot of people use Jenkins, Circle CI, things along those lines. Um, and so as a demo, I will show our pipeline file really quick. So here I have a sample pipeline. Um, it's all as code. And you can see we're doing very simple stuff here. Uh, we have some variables that we're setting here at the beginning, which I will go over. We are pre-building images and then pushing those images into the uh, container registry that we also created to house those containers. Um, and then we are running a Helm upgrade deploy script. Um, so first we have to run, uh, we have to actually install Helm and get it onto the worker. And then we're running a Helm upgrade to run this Helm chart to deploy to Kubernetes. And then after that, we just do some cleanup of everything and grab logs of our Kubernetes deployment. So to kind of show how to build this pipeline into DevOps, I am going to actually copy and paste it 
and we'll just rename it demo pipeline. And then come back to our organization and I can select new pipeline. And this is where it's kind of cool. It actually hooks into your repo wherever you are, whether you're using Azure repos or Bitbucket, GitHub, any of those. Um, we're using GitHub. And so what it would normally do whenever I select GitHub here is it would actually reach out and check, uh, ask me to log in and check against where I'm logging into. I've already done that. I'm already logged in. So I'm just going to select Azure Drupal GovCon. And before I forget, I need to commit that new file that I added. and pushed up. So that's now there. So as far as configuring these pipelines, they have a lot of different out of the box options. So like you can see they have a deploy to Azure Kubernetes service. I'm not sure, I think I've used that one or two times. Normally I try to keep them as YAML files inside the repository for those same uh, benefits of source control. Uh, but they have a lot of out of the box options here where you could deploy a Node.js a Node with Vue uh, uh, application, things along those lines. Um, but for our purposes, for this demo, I'm going to se select at the bottom uh, existing Azure Pipelines YAML file. And it's going to ask me what branch it's on, which it's just on master. And then it has a drop down of all the files that are available within that master. So I have my demo pipeline file that I can continue with. It's going to show it to me. It's, uh, and I'm going to select save. So before we run this, a few things to go over. So there's kind of a question right now of, you have this pipeline file that wants to deploy and run Helm commands on your Kubernetes cluster, but does it have access to do that? Does it have any way of actually authenticating to that? And the answer is not right now, or it wouldn't right now. And so uh, Azure Pipelines actually has a feature called service connections. Uh, which works really great with connecting to any Azure so resource and also outside resources. So if you didn't want to use Azure's uh, container registry, you could use a service connection to then go and connect out to uh, a different container registry that you might have. Um, and so I'm going to go to service connections and you'll see I have a few of them here selected. Uh, so these two are connecting to my GitHub user. And then uh, these two are actually connecting to our uh, container registry and our resource group. So this one is going to a Docker registry. Um, I can show what it looks like to add one of those. So we can do add new service connection. And these are the different options of different service connections that they have available. Um, this one is a Docker registry. And it gives you the option opportunity to specify. Do you have a custom registry out there? Uh, do you want to use a default one out in Docker Hub and then also has the canned Azure container registry where you can select authentication type service connection name description. Um, and so this is important in that you'll notice the one that I have set up is DGC 24 ACR, uh, which is short for Drupal GovCon 2024 and then ACR is Azure uh, container registry. And I have that called out right here. And so I name it registry service connection. Uh, that is going to be very important for these log into the registries and build and push those uh, containers out to that registry. If uh, we don't have that service connection created, those will fail. Uh, same thing for this one. This one is actually a Azure resource manager uh, connection, which is very similar to the ACR, except it is uh, kind of more wide in that it tries to give different, uh, it tries to give access to everything within that resource group. Um, I think I set that one up with a managed identity. You have lots of different authentication methods. Um, there are, I think Microsoft has many articles out there describing uh, the benefits of their managed identities and different things like that, but you can still set it up some of the more older homegrown ways. So. Um, if we go out to our pipeline, if we wanted to run it, we can just simply say run and select master. Um, we should be able to do that, I think. Do some live testing here. It takes about a minute and a half because uh, our repo is very small and 
not, not a whole lot there. Um, and so this is going to go out, reach out to Kubernetes, and trigger that deployment. So I'm going to run back over into our command line while that is running. And one of the things that gets installed with uh, Azure CLI is uh, a command line package called Cube Control. Um, and so Cube Control is very helpful in that it is the way that you can check on different parts of your uh, Kubernetes service and different things like that if you prefer to do it in the terminal. I will also go over and show uh, Azure has its own uh, services available to you inside the Azure portal that allow you to look at the same things. Um, so if I do kube control uh, get namespaces, namespaces is an organization structure within Kubernetes that allows you to kind of uh, organize how you're managing different applications and things we will see that I should have a number of different namespaces here. So uh, four of them are created automatically for any Kubernetes cluster that's hosted within AKS. Uh, default, kube node lease, kube public, and kube system. So those are all the things that AKS uses, helps manage the control plane, everything else like that. Um, after that, they also have the app routing system one, which is by default added if you include app routing in your uh, AKS um, deployment. There's a lot of different ways to do routing within Kubernetes, um, whether you want to deploy your own Nginx ingress or do its in homegrown in-house AKS uh, app routing. I've never had an issue with the AKS routing itself, um, but I'm sure there are use cases out there for it to be customized. Uh, you'll notice I have a Drupal namespace that that's what I've deployed to, so if I do kube control git all and then specify dash in for namespace and put Drupal, you'll notice we have uh, two pods, two services, two deployment apps, and two replica sets. And so this is everything that that namespace has in it, uh, and this is what is running Drupal. So we have everything there set up and running. So let's walk through, how does it get this information? How does this actually deploy? And the answer to that How's is, DB? I'm sorry? How is the DB? There is no DB when I, once we go into AKS. So my recommendation as you move into a, uh, a full environment is to use a database service, right? Okay. Uh, I include the DB in the Docker Compose primarily for local development. Okay. So if we walk into the Helm chart, this is where it's getting all of that information and it knows what it wants to deploy and needs to deploy out into Kubernetes. Um, you can go through documentation if you just Google Helm documentation and it will walk you through how to create one of these Helm charts in different pieces. I've got an example here. We'll, we'll walk through each file really quick. Um, none of them are very big. So the chart is basically just a version ability and it tells you you can set what API version you want to use, requirements, I don't know if I've ever added anything there, but I'm sure there's a use case for it. Uh, the values, this is where we set all of our variables within the Helm chart that we're gonna be using. Um, and so you'll notice, you know, we'll just kind of walk through it. We have project, which is Drupal. We have an ingress class, which we're using the Nginx ingress that I talked about, which is a part of their app container uh, routing. Uh, we're setting our container ports here for web and PHP. Replicas, so this is the number of pods you had. So let's say if you did get this farther along and you were actually hosting a website and traffic was scaling up and you needed a reason to scale these up manually, you can actually come in here and change your web replicas to two and your PHP replicas to three, let's say. And so what that's gonna do is instead of you only have one pod hosting that service, you're now gonna have multiple pods and Kubernetes, the service, is going to load balance it for you. Uh, we have tiers, so this is where uh, you kind of define the tier and that allows you to um, define different variables for that tier. So if you had PHP and another thing that were similar, um, hosting a different application, you could have them in the same tier and you'll see down below, we're gonna have resources that we can set um, to manage those tiers and manage those pods. Uh, next we have images for each, which is basically just pointing to that uh, Azure Container Registry that I had set up and I'm basically giving it the image name and I'm telling it I always want to pull the latest uh, image. Next we have resources. So this is the part where I was talking about those tiers are really great. So for each different tier, you can set up resource uh, requests and limits. So what this means is the web pod is going to try to limit 
any requests to taking up half a CPU and taking up 256 meg of memory. And that's for a single request, not for lots of things, right? And then the limits of what it can actually take up as a whole, as a whole pod, is one whole CPU and two gigs of memory. And so this is important as you're planning out within AKS what your node sizes are and also what your pods that fit within those nodes are. So you can imagine a node is just a VM out there that has some amount of CPU and memory available to it. And if you have these tiers assigned to certain pools of nodes um, and you had you know, limits of two CPU on one and six containers, but the whole thing only has four CPUs available to it, you've got a problem or you will likely hit a limit whenever it comes to that, right? Uh, next is PHP, same concept, same kind of stuff. And then at the end we have the environment variables. So these are variables that you can actually set uh, that get passed into your containers whenever you run the Helm chart and it builds your containers. Um, I've, as you can see, left out most of the MySQL stuff, but that's where you would configure your connection string more or less to your MySQL database. Uh, you would also replicate that in your settings.ini, right? Um, they do allow for you to do secrets and secret key references. So inside Azure, they have a service called Key Vault, very similar to uh, other services, and basically the same thing. You can just reference, I want to use this secret, and because it has that um, built-in service connection, it's able to reach out, get that key, and use it from there instead of actually having to have a password or something like that in plain text. So, yeah. You know, I haven't seen this, this uh, file before, but I'm sure. familiar with that in DevOps and pipeline handles. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, oh, you're putting a uh, password into your uh, repo. Yeah, I'm not. That's the thing. That, that's where this is connecting. It's going out to a key vault service that is holding that. And it's basically going to have that permission based from the service connection where it can reach out and get that password from the oh, service. That way we don't have to put it in plain text code, right? Got it. Thank you. And so this is the base three files that go into a Helm chart. But the big thing that actually plays a factor is you put in templates. And so these templates are where you're defining the different pieces of that Kubernetes cluster that we're talking about. So if you remember, whenever we were back to the previous stage, we said, give me everything that's in this namespace Drupal. And we have pods, we have services, we have deployments, we have replica sets. If we come back to our repo inside of templates, um, replica sets are kind of not the same because they get derived out of deployments. But uh, we have kind of the same thing. We have deployments, we have services that we are defining, and that's what's going out and creating those within Kubernetes. So we have a deployment for uh, PHP. We have a deployment for web. These are pretty simple. You can see we've gone through, and this is how we're referencing the values within the values.yaml and pulling those values in and using them. Some of these are doing things like um, I'm annotating just with a random number to make sure they get a new version every time. Um, there's a number of replicas we want, so this is where we're pulling in how many of those pods do we want to use. And then we also have a revision history limit, so I have this set to zero here, right? It defaults to 10, so this is how many different revisions of the uh, deployment do we want to keep around just in case we needed a rollback or this or that, right? Um, we also have pod affinities that are able to do that. So you can uh, select, you can have pods have affinities to certain nodes and different things like that that you would identify within here. Um, and then we have our containers where we're calling out that image pull policy, the images, the ports that they're using, and the command that that container is ultimately going to run once it starts. May I ask another yeah. architecture question? Sure. So the templates directory is accessed through the pipeline? Yep. Good. It's, it's a part of the Helm chart as a whole. So Helm charts. At, at a base level, I believe they are always going to include that chart requirements values files, and then they're also going to include a templates directory that contains all of your different uh, services and deployments and things like that. Uh, there's also another thing that we'll go over in a minute um, that is a big thing in Kubernetes, which is jobs. Um, so we'll go over that in just a second. I don't want to jump too far ahead. 
Um, inside here we have an ingress. So this is how inside of that namespace, how are we defining what we want, where we want traffic to go. And so this is where I have a sample host name and I'm saying I want to send this to web and using the web port and the path is just the default path. And then we have two services that we defined, which again, pretty simple, basic stuff. If you go to uh, Helm chart repos, they'll give you something similar to this as an example, uh, basically just saying we want to deploy that pod. This is how the service does all of the load balancing of that service, right? Okay. So that's how it kind of derives all those different features within here. Uh, one of the things that we did as a part of that that I'll just show as a demo is, if you remember, we came in here and we changed the number of our replicas. So I want to demo and show that. You'll notice right now we only have one pod of each. If I do a git status, we did not save our file. If I do a git status now, we should have a changed file. I will commit that up and say add new replicas and push it up. And now if we go back to our pipeline, uh, which I had two of them, here's the new demo pipeline. And I run a new release and I run off of master. You can always tell, uh, it will always include the latest commit message as here. Uh, if you have multiple runs against the same commit message, it'll, I think it'll just append them on with the number at the beginning. Uh, but you can kind of always tell if you're grabbing the latest changes that you did, maybe you commit to a wrong branch or anything else like that. Um, and so we can actually click on details here and it will follow this along Similar to what you'll see uh, if people are familiar with like uh, Blue Ocean on Jenkins, something like that. Uh, you'll be able to kind of follow along with the deployment, see the different things that it's doing. And this is really helpful for whenever you're trying to troubleshoot problems with the deployment or this or that, right? Um, and so you can see here, these are the steps that we went through. I'm trying to look up there. I should just look here. Uh, these are all the steps that we set up in there. So we're copying files over, logging to the registry, building the image, pushing the image, doing that same thing for both of them. Um, this one, uh, I, I have the, I left the composer piece in there for the pipeline, just because, you know, obviously I think if you were to try to use this going forward, I think one of the first things you're gonna do is wanna set up some of the more Drupal things, uh, set up composer, allow it to copy those files over and do all of that for you. So all of that's there, easy to see. So after it's done with that, it should move on to deploy to AKS with Helm. And so on the subject of Helm, so I like it, I prefer it. I think it's a really nice way to automate and do certain things within the Kubernetes cluster. It is by no means required. Uh, you can do everything that we're doing with Helm through uh, just more commands using uh, just cube control apply and things like that. And uh, a lot of the templating and the template formatting is very similar. Um, but Helm just makes it a little bit easier and a little bit cleaner in my opinion. Um, there have been concerns in the past, like I'm saying in the past probably four or five years ago, of certain security things with Helm, which is actually why you notice in my pipeline, we actually add Helm to the worker, do the deployment, and then remove it. But as far as I know, I don't think there's been any issues with it since then. So now that our Helm upgrade is done, if we come back and go up and get everything out of our Drupal uh, cluster, you'll notice we now have five pods. We have three PHP and two web. So it actually scaled that up. The services are gonna automatically um, load balance to those different pods. There are different ways that you can um, manage how they do that. Like, do you wanna do one request to each? How do you manage that? Uh, I'm not getting into that as part of this demo, but it's something you can certainly research and uh, do on your own. And yeah, that's kind of an example of scaling up, changing something in the Helm chart, running the pipeline, going through all of that, right? 
Um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about and kind of show is I added this future, uh, future folder because another thing that you would want to add if you were to actually build this out and go into a full-on Drupal website is a way to run site updates, right, and config updates. So uh, the way that we have accomplished this on a few different jobs is we use two different things called one job site install, one job site update, very similar to what you're used to inside of Drush, right? And so these are jobs that would get created as Kubernetes, and with Helm, you actually set a hook as to how these happen. Um, so site install would be post install, so any the first time that you install that service, it's gonna try to hook and run that job. And then we have post upgrade, so every time you try to upgrade that service, it's gonna grab that hook and try to run this job. And so what we did to actually make this work is we utilize, um, I think it's a contrib module uh, called Robo, and we utilize a Robo file to help us manage and make a little bit of that command cleaner. And so I included these in the future uh, folder, and then I also included the Robo file, which I ripped out some you know terrible junk out of it to make sure it was safe to go public. But you'll notice we have Robo available to do remote site updates, and it's going through kind of your general usual stuff. Setting the website in the maintenance mode, doing a cache clear, updating the DB, importing config, doing another cache clear. Uh, we have some specific um, stuff that we don't need, but and then turning off maintenance mode and doing a cache clear, and should all that go successfully, the job's gonna run successfully, and your site should be updated with any of the changes that you have. Um, I'm sure there's other ways or possible ways to do the site update, site install. This was just the clean way that we found to do it. Um, the address deploy uh, uh, has encapsulated cap basically the, the steps you're doing right there. Really? FYI. Yeah. You know, it's, it's real handy. We use it all the time. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a better way to do it then. Um, no, but it's the same concept. You said, instead of it being six or seven lines, it would just be one line. It's one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, going back to my README, uh, kind of to finalize and finish up here, uh, this project was something I just built. Um, as a reference, kind of a jumping off point, just to demo Azure, AKS, and primarily probably pipelines um, for people who maybe haven't used it, haven't seen it, things like that. Um, I kind of talk about, uh, you know, continuing development of it would be adding in Composer, adding in static file storage as blob storage. You can add that as a volume mount inside the Helm chart. Um, things like that, and then obviously at the end I say, uh, I left most of the database stuff empty because if you're pushing to AKS and using AKS, I would say I would recommend using a database service versus trying to use a database pod. I know both technically work and can be feasible. Um, yeah, that's all I have. What questions do we have? All right, so back up on ADO. Okay. okay. I saw you run uh, pipelines manually. Yep. Okay. So if it's out of scope for your presentation, I'm sure you know how. What about having the pipelines run automatically? You can set them up as a hook inside of your PR um, with most of the different things. So like with Azure, that's very easy. It's all out of the box and you can just, you know, click a few settings. Um, I, I don't want to demo it because I don't know it perfectly. That's fine. But I, I guarantee you, you could probably look up the documentation. Microsoft's pretty good about that documentation. Um, and I know we've done that on a previous project before. Right, well, uh, we, don't, we, we have too much automation happening. Sure. Too, too many pipelines running now, and too many email messages coming out of it. Right, so, so I, I, I want to find a way to limit that, and that's where, I, that's where my question comes sure. from. And then, of course, you are, you are you know, the, the top level. Uh, uh, permissions on the ADO you just showed us, right? So I may or may not have those permissions, but I can always yep. ask for them. Yeah. Once I know, once I know what I want to do. Yep. Yep. You can you can set them up to run automatically based on PR or merge or anything like that. Um, you can set them up, uh, you know, with schedules, um, things along those lines that we've done. Um, you can also set up different ways to do notifications within those. So uh, as out of the box pipelines comes with, you can do different you know, feeds, or you can do emails, things along those lines. Any other questions?
Well, I hope this was helpful. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And I hope everybody has a great rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.